Well, Yvonne, what's the most unique thing that you think you've ever had on your holiday table? Mm, most unique thing on my holiday table. Or is like your family completely traditional? Uh, we're pretty traditional. And I don't mean a rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> that poor chicken. But anyway, uh, let me think. Um, gosh, we're pretty traditional. You know, it's usually the, the the cornbread dressing. I know some people like other types of dressing, and it's just traditional dressing. We don't put any oysters or anything in it mm -hmm. like that. Um, uh, just the turkey, you know, and the, we have usually greens. I know a lot of people have uh, green beans, but we have we usually have greens, green beans, and corn. So, oh, you know, we leave no we leave no stone unturned. <laughs> okay. That's good. <laughs> Greens, yeah. Greens, green beans and corn. Uh-huh. Hmm. So there's something and for everyone. And, oh gosh, yes, mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Homemade mashed potatoes, not the ones from the box, <laughs> that's but the right. ones you have to squish yourself. And you call it dressing as opposed to stuffing. Yeah, we call it dressing. Because they, we don't we don't put it in stuff? the bird. No, we don't stuff the bird. Okay. My mom always stuffed the bird. Mm -hmm. So we always always called it stuffing. stuffing. Uh huh. You know, all, the, although I've had many dietitians that said it's not the best idea to yeah. actually put it into the bird to cook. Yeah. But I'm still here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, yes, and it works for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it has, so. But yeah. I understand it's not the yeah. best mm -hmm. option. So I wonder, is that like the only difference between dressing and stuffing? Is the actual way in which it's cooked? Right, the way it's cooked, in, in what it's cooked, <laughs> whether it's cooked in the bird or outside the bird. Now, my mom's is generally cooked like a casserole, which is outside of the bird. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then we add the, uh, the juices from the turkey in the cornbread uh, stuffing, celery, celery seeds, onion, um, you know, just whatever you like for the holidays. But like I said, ours is pretty basic. Uh, I know because I know people put a lot more ingredients in theirs than we do. Yeah, and you do cornbread. Cornbread. Right? Which I've had, and that's I think that's a southern, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say that's southern. Because like my mom, we just broke up bread. a loaf of white bread. <laughs> I, I know, I've seen that, and I wonder, what on earth are they doing? And that's not and dressing. And then onions and uh -huh. oil or sure. whatever. Uh -huh. you know I mean, sure. mixed it up with stuff, but it was just, it wasn't cornbread. Yeah. But I have had cornbread dressing by some southern ladies, mm -hmm. and it's really good. Yeah. I, I, I'm not going to ask you which one you like best because uh, I know you have family watching and uh, <laughs> we don't want any hurt feelings here, but I like the cornbread better. It's, it's got more, I don't know, it's, it's heavier, mm -hmm. you know, it's, more t it's tastier to me. It holds the flavor a little bit more. I, do, I have had the white bread stuffing as well and uh, it's good, but I like the cornbread a little bit better. Yeah, I, they were both good. Mm -hmm. They both had their individual pros and cons, I yes. guess, as mm -hmm. the case may be. But it's also, it's like, cornbread is, so, like, when, have you ever eaten at Cracker Barrel? Mm-hmm. You know, when you eat there, they offer you biscuits or cornbread. Right. Which would you pick? It would depend on what I was eating. Oh, it would? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want cornbread with, um, um, with uh, I don't know, any ground up meat or anything, you know, uh, okay. you know, with my meatloaf, I wouldn't want cornbread, you know, okay. but I wouldn't want a biscuit either. I might just ask for just a plain slice of bread or no, eat no bread at all. Cause oh. to me, it just wouldn't go with, you know, I love carbohydrates. I know you do. Gary. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> but, yes. Yeah. But I always get the biscuit. Uh huh. Cause I like biscuit I like and meatloaf. Now come on. Well, I don't get meatloaf. Oh, okay. I usually like chicken and dumplings. Chicken and dumplings. Okay. Okay. Now, now if you got chicken and dumplings, which would you get? I could get either because I, but I think I'd probably get cornbread because the dumplings have the consistency of the biscuit already. So I'd have one of each. Oh, that's true. I guess I do. Uh huh. I know you had yeah. the biscuit, right? The biscuit. Yeah. With the, uh -huh. I, because that's what I have, what I grew up eating too, uh -huh. more mm -hmm. so than cornbread. Although I like cornbread, mm -hmm. but it's not like, I know some people that will salivate over good cornbread. Yeah, you know? cornbread's kind of grainy, you know that that texture. It's the texture that I like. Yeah, you know uh, that seems to to. No, I like corn. Uh -huh. I like corn chips. I like I whole, like a whole lot. Corn. Yeah, and, whole but I like corn. cornbread too. It's just you know it's mm -hmm. not. Yeah. I'd rather biscuit. Mm -hmm. But we did a thing several years ago on a rather unique holiday mm -hmm. tradition for a family <laughs> here in central Kentucky. We thought it was unique anyway. Yes. Then we got some feedback and it was when we were doing our dessert auctions mm -hmm. here on channel six central Kentucky television. There are fundraisers for people in the local community. 
And this lady gave us one of these sausage cakes yes. to sell at the auction. And so we had to talk about that. And then the person who bought it said that it was really good. Yes. So we decided to find out what goes into making a sausage, sausage cake, cake. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, we did, Gary. And you got the opportunity to find that out, didn't you? Yes, I did. And it stands by its name, sausage cake, because I was in denial. Like, no, nobody puts sausage in cake. That That's it's just a name. It, that's it, weird. Yeah, that's <laughs> weird. That They're just subbing, you know, or just you know, doing something different just to, to get you interested. And no, <laughs> they actually put sausage in the cake. And it was like, oh my. But and it was pretty good. Yes, it was. It was. It wasn't bad at all. Yeah. And they used the sausage for moisture to keep the cake moist. And it did. And it's a definitely a family tradition. It's a mm -hmm. family recipe that they've had. And actually, this lady shared her story behind it too, right? Yes, she did. She shared the story with us about it. I mean, it was a little... Um, unbelievable but you know, it is what it is you know you know it one thing uh that i think i learn over and over again is our differences and our likenesses you know and mm -hmm. this is just a different side of cakes that i had never seen before and come to appreciate exactly so here's a little central kentucky television channel six christmas flashback for you <laughs> with yvonne and peggy schweitzer Hi, this is Yvonne, and I'm here this morning with Peggy Schweitzer. How you doing, Peggy? Just fine. Just and we're fine. down at St. Catharines College, and uh, Peggy, we're going to make what today? A sausage cake. A what? A sausage <laughs> cake. <laughs> okay. Now, the, it, first, it, the first time I heard that, I went, uh, I don't know. I never heard of that, Peggy. It, it has some unusual ingredients. It uh -huh. has sausage, coffee. Uh-huh. Uh, raisins. Well, the raisins are unusual, but the uh, sausage and coffee, coffee is mixed, pretty unusual. Yeah, you can have yes. coffee with your sausage, but not sausage in your coffee in it, your cake. In your cake, like, yes. Yeah, that's just a little <laughs> odd. Well, you know, yeah. what can I say? It's an old family <laughs> no, uh, recipe. Okay, and it's been your family for a long time. Yes. Um, of course, with, at my age, it was I got it from my grandmother, which uh -huh. I'm sure she got it from her great-grandmother. Okay. We're also going to, be, going to be using the pan that my um, grandmother used, okay. the tube pan. It's an antique. It's an antique, yes. yes. So uh, it's, it's just something that we would have for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh -huh. And the, Now, when we made the ones in the two pans that didn't have the icing, uh, mother had a our grandmother had a granite bucket, a blue and white granite uh -huh. bucket, and it was wrapped in, of course the cake mm -hmm. was wrapped, but then it was wrapped in uh, cheesecloth oh, okay. and stored in the bucket mm -hmm. from Thanksgiving until Christmas. And, Whenever we got done eating. Yes, indeed. Well, that sounds wonderful. And I see we've got our gloves yes, out here. Yes, we do. We've got our gloves for us to get cooking here. And I know we've got lots of wonderful ingredients, and you're going to tell us all about yes. it as we make it. Um, this cake has a lot of leg work to do, uh -huh. but once you get, it's, it's nothing that's hard, but it just takes a few minutes to get everything together, get together. organized, yes. yes. And, then, and so we'll kind of be doing this in two steps. We're going to do all of our leg work first, and uh -huh. then we will put it in the mixing bowl. Okay, that sounds good. Now, I noticed, too, that we have raisins in this recipe, and you said the first thing you needed me to do was put the raisins in the water. In the water and over to be boiled. Raisins. Okay. We'll now, these. This, you know, some people might agree with this, some might not, but if you've ever baked with raisins, and you just put the raisins in your mixing bowl and mm -hmm. mix it up. When you bake it, every raisin is going to be at the bottom okay. of your cake. So oh. why don't you go ahead and put it. So what okay. we're going to do is we're going to boil the raisins. Whoop. And, there we go. And then we're going to drain them, mm -hmm. pat them dry, and we're going to roll them in some flour. And I guarantee you the raisins will not settle in the bottom. Oh. Okay. Now, shall we first give them the recipe for this or tell them some of the things that are going to go into it? Okay, well, uh, your sausage uh -huh. is ready to, okay. for you to come bring over. It's a, okay, we we'll get my sausage. We have fried a pound of sausage. Okay. And I'm going to take my hand and... There we go. Got the sausage and we're draining them. And Draining then we'll, the sausages. What you want to do is take this sausage and just crumble it a little bit finer. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know there are... Um, now, what does the sausage add to the cake? Is it like additional flavor or texture? It's texture and it's uh, like the oil. 
uh -huh. that would normally be in a cake because from the it's going to come from, from the, the sausage. sausage okay and we could use a food processor to do this but i know my great grandmother did not have a food processor okay so i try to keep the recipe do the recipe as close as to what they did so it'll come out all right okay lots of nice sausage here and actually when you eat the cake you can't even tell that it is sausage uh -huh. Now tell me, what type of sausage should you be using for this? Well, the recipe calls for just plain pork sausage, okay. not whole hog sausage, but okay. I use the whole hog sausage. And the difference between that is, um, well, a lot of times you can't find just straight up pork sausage. Whole hog has several different kinds of trimmings in with... Okay. So you're going to actually get more fat. Exactly. Uh -huh. Whole hog is fattier. Uh huh. Okay. So we got that in your cake. So I'm not even going to ask you how many calories are going to be in this cake because actually it really doesn't matter. It's because Christmas. It's, who cares? That's right. You it's know? the holiday. There's no calories in the holidays. <laughs> Everybody knows that. And see, we can have plenty of calories because we're not using our bourbon today. That's right. That's right. Our, our usual. Our usual, yes. Mm -hmm. Usually when we meet, we're in the bottle of bourbon, Ooh, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> meant to speak to you about that, the missing bourbon today. But uh, the sausage is getting, you know, we're breaking these down, finer pieces. I think this is going to be, pr you know, after thinking about this, it might be kind of tasty after all, you well, know? Well, I have a cake baked that you all are going to taste today, it's just to, mm -hmm. so you will know. Yes, so I think that's looking pretty good, yeah, don't you? Yeah, I now, do. We need to check on the raisins. It just takes a second for okay, them to. Okay, we'll check on those raisins. In the meantime, we've got the sausage here just still going on breaking this up into tiny little pieces because we're going to put this in the cake and it's going to add a little extra fat to it to make it a little richer so making it a little richer is going to make it a little more palatable to the taste and uh, the entire family will want to have more than one slice of this yeah. wonderful cake. As you can see they're just a little bit puffy that's okay, all show you it to want. the camera. And that's what they look like mm -hmm. when you and then we're just going to put this in here. Uh -huh. And you've got a strainer in there, so we're straining those. Yes. Now, I wouldn't advise this, but I, I, I'm used to having my hands in, around heat, mm -hmm. so. So they're strained. They look a little pruney now. But that's okay. That's the way we want them. Because we're going to roll them in flour, and they're going to make them look a whole lot better, isn't it? First, we're going to pat them dry, and okay. then put them in the flour. Okay. So. Move the sausage out of the way over here. So the raisins. I forget I can touch them. I have my gloves on. Yes, there we go. There you go. And then we'll get this out of the way. Okay, I'm going to use a paper towel here to blot some of the moisture out. Okay. And as you roll them, you can put them in there. Okay. Now what are we going to do? Show me how to do the first one here, Peggy. Okay. You just gotta. Oh, okay. Okay. So we're just gonna flour the raisins. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can do that. And if you got kids around your house, <laughs> this would be a good job. For them. Yes, it'd be a great job for them. I'm sure they would love it. Something about kids and cooking, huh? They love it. Love getting their hands all into it. I'm a very messy baker, so yeah, well, you would think that I have had 10 kids in the kitchen when I bake. Well, you know, with other places, we know that they, they have somebody who cleans up after them. So uh, I'm going to. But you know, when Grandma used to make this, I'm sure she made a little bit of a mess, too. Now, I have never seen floured raisins before, so this is a first for me. And I do this with any recipe that I'm baking with mm -hmm. I, it, it, that calls for raisins, uh -huh. not just the sausage cake. Uh -huh. But it will definitely keep your raisins from. So, this is a tip then. Them. This is a baking tip, you know, if you want to go to the bottom. You want to keep those raisins from sinking down to the bottom. Go ahead and uh, put some flour on them. 
get them all floured up. Now you can tell we've already used the most of the flour. Mm -hmm. So there's another step done. Okay. That's another step. Yeah, we'll so we've got our raisins one. done. And I, I mentioned before that there is coffee. This mm -hmm. is a cup of coffee, and you, you want it to be cold. Okay. So now, what type of coffee? Are we talking regular coffee, or can we use decaf? Or well, I kind of like to use regular coffee. Uh -huh. You know, okay. it puts a little pop in the bag instead of decaf. <laughs> oh, I see. Is that what we're looking for And here? we need two teaspoons of uh, baking soda dissolved in the coffee. We gotta make sure that it's dissolved. We're gonna stir it a little bit here. She's making me work today. Yes. I'm not used to that. <laughs> but this is a great recipe. It's got all kinds of surprise ingredients in it. Okay. Well, I think we're Okay, and we'll just push that off to the side. Okay. And here's your next. It has cloves, nutmeg, and cinnamon, and you need a teaspoon of each one in there. One teaspoon of each other side. That doesn't work, just take the... Whoa. I better just take the lid off. You want to get that one for me? Get the lid off that one for me. Teaspoon. Smell those cloves. I love mm -hmm. cloves. Mm -hmm. That's oh, definitely a holiday item when you have mm -hmm. cloves. I believe you've been holding out on me. What? I believe you've been baking this week. Now, you're going to do two of those. Two. And we'll see how well you can pour that into your teaspoon, but not over here. If you, mm -hmm. if you spill it, just let it go on the counter. That way you won't get well, too much. Well, how am I going to get this out of here? Pick no, you're going right? to pour it. Oh. you just going to have to. Let me pour it out of the side here, just a little smaller one, so I don't get it everywhere. Okay, here we go. Here. Oh, oh. You were absolutely right. We did spill some. How much do we need here? Just one? Two. Two of these. Whoa. This is all spice. Oh. Okay, one. Okay. See, that's why we have counters. Mm -hmm. That's why we have counters. <laughs> A little bit more. And two. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Spray our pan. Okay. This is another little tip. The baker spray, uh, mm -hmm. when you're baking, if you'll use a spray that has flour in it. If okay. you'll see on here. One that has flour. It okay. has flour in it, and it mm -hmm. will keep your cakes from sticking to the bottom. And you want to spray around the center of the cone really well. Yes. Get her over here. Because we don't want this baby to stick. <laughs> we want to slide right on out. Now, all of our leg work is done, so what we need to do is get everything ready in the next step, and we're ready to mix. Just one second here. There we go. Let's so, clean up a little bit. Okay. So you've done a good job getting everything ready. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 